I know it's midnight and I know you guys are thinking, what is Melanie doing going live at midnight? Well, let me tell you, I want to show you guys what it's really like to be an event planner after dark. So while everyone else is, yes, I'm working late, Keelan. While everyone else is sleeping, we are up working. Keelan is up because he's also in the industry. He's up probably editing. I'm up prepping flowers for a wedding. And this was a last minute situation that I had to do the day today because there's a shortage of white flowers in the wedding industry. Hey, Jay. And so I had to drive nearly two hours away to get some white flowers and process them for my wedding this weekend because the ones that I ordered over a month ago did not arrive. And so, hey, hey y'all, what y'all doing up this late? And so I thought, you know what? I'm always sharing the glitz and the glamor of event planning, but this is what it's really like. This is like the real life, the real world of event planning after dark. It's 12 midnight. I've already processed three buckets. I have over a thousand more roses to process. My team is at home asleep because this was a last minute thing. So I didn't plan um, accordingly. And so their schedules have already, you know, has already been kind of, their time has already been scheduled out to other things. So I got to get this done. I have to get the, the, oh, thank you so much for leaving your thumbs up. I have to go ahead and get this done. I have to get these processed. So yeah, I'm, I wanted to just share with you guys, like this is the real life situation of what happens in event planning and design and decor after dark. And these are the hours that our clients don't see. They don't see us up at midnight process, processing flowers. They don't see the four hours I drove today just to get these flowers because my order was canceled at the last minute due to the storms, due to failure to harvest, availability, flowers that were ruined, all the flowers that went to Fashion Week in Italy. They don't see all of that. And so after dark, we're up, we're working, we're planning, we're creating checklists. Right next to me, I have this checklist of all the things that I need to take care of before the event this weekend little last minute things, things I forgot about. And so when people think about this field, they think about the glitz and the glamour, the customers, the final product. You guys see the YouTube video with, you know, the before and after, and you're like, oh my gosh, that is amazing. I love it. But what you don't see is this part right here. So as I was up, my husband's in the back, he's asleep. As I was up thinking about this, put this bag here so I can um, cut these. But as I was up kind of thinking about like this whole industry, this is why I always say you have to have a love and a passion for it because what else is going to motivate you to stay up after midnight, night after night, weekend after weekend, giving every single weekend up, to do events if you don't love it. You gotta love it. Because really and truly the customers can never really pay you for the time that you put into this. And this is what people need to see. Oh, thank you guys. Yeah, be sure to give me a thumbs up. This is what the people need to see. This is what happens. This is what happens after dark and we still got a whole this is just processing just the roses we still have hydrangeas 
we still have um, orchids. I'm really excited about the design we're doing this weekend. I just pray to God everything works like it's supposed to. So that's why I'm starting really extra early prepping all the normal things that we do, the larger centerpieces and um, all of the bridal party flowers, getting everything prepped so that when it's time to do this new design, I won't be, you know, worried about all the other small details. I have those out of the way. So I've already done three buckets of roses. I think they were, I don't know how many bundles are in each bucket, but I do know that there are over a thousand roses. I do know that. And when you're doing roses, you have to remove all of the leaves because the leaves can get into the water and they can um, positively or negatively affect, you know, having leaves can definitely prohibit your shelf life if you have them, if they get in the water. And then giving them this fresh chop allows them to live a little bit longer. And so that's what I'm doing tonight. I'm chopping them. I've given them some fresh water. I'll give them some more fresh water tomorrow. And um, we'll go from there. One more that needs a fresh chop. And so all of these are freshly chopped. I like to chop them at an angle so that they can drink better. And then I'll put them in the bucket. Now, tonight is roses. Sometimes it can be um, a DIY. Maybe I'm doing invitations or uh, programs or menu cards or any of those things, you know any of those things. And it can be a project that lends its way way into midnight. Sometimes I have even stayed up the entire night, like 24 hours, all the way to the next day through the event to make sure things go as planned. And it's just nothing but the grace of God that just keeps me and just my love and passion for this industry. And what I do go way beyond a before and after video on YouTube. It starts behind the scene. Hey, Jasmine. Hey, all you guys that are tuning in. What are y'all doing up late this late at night? Please tell me. And for those of you guys who are watching this on a replay, um, what do you find yourself doing the most when you stay up after hours with event planning? Is it like small details and DIY centerpieces, ironing tablecloths and linens? What is that last minute task that keeps you up all the time late at night? So I'm just cutting these all at an angle. I try to keep the length on them um, because I don't know what ultimately length I'm going to need them for my um final design and so i keep them long as long as possible because these are pretty i keep them as long as possible because um i can always make them shorter but once you cut a fresh flower you can't make it longer well you can but you don't want to have to go through that. This is my last one in this bucket. And I still have one, two, three, four, five more buckets to go. Five more buckets to go. So you're up on social media. Somebody was up watching my videos. Y'all need to check them out. 
I got so many videos that I need to edit that I haven't had an opportunity to edit because as you can see, I just don't have the time. Who's getting their hair done? Are you getting it braided or just done? And I wanna be careful with the heads of these um, roses because they're really delicate. They're like little babies and I have broken, and there's already a shortage in roses and I've broken four rose heads already. So I'm, I normally strip them down like that, but I'm gonna be careful tonight because I don't wanna break any more heads. And there I go stripping. It's so much quicker to just strip it than it is to pull them off one by one. Oh, you can't sleep. You better recite that scripture I gave you in Proverbs 3 and 24. Who's in the hospital? Oh, Jesus. I pray Isaiah 53 and 5 over you. And I pray that all goes well with your surgery in Jesus' name. This is late for a surgery or early one. Where are you located? I don't like doing surgery this late. got a fresh cut. God bless you too. I'm gonna make sure all of those are in some water. Oh, just finish it. Yeah, those braids will keep you up. Wait. I apologize. Y'all, the leaves hit the floor. I apologize for the crinkling of the paper, y'all. This is just the nature of the beast. Okay, I'm gonna show you guys um, where these flowers are. So those are the roses we're processing. The wedding colors for this weekend are white, ivory, and gold. There you Okay, y'all, so, oh, thank you. So what I'm going to do is I'm putting fresh water in. Hey, Tanya, I'm putting fresh water into my plants. I'm gonna just take some food since the wedding isn't until Sunday. I wanna make sure that I put the plant food and the water in here together and mix it up, give it a nice mix. Hey, Brittany. Thank you so much, Benita. You need to take Lux Academy. I think it'll be really helpful. I have a lot of people here tonight that have taken Lux Academy. Thank you. Oh, this was good for me to go live this late because a lot of you guys, all of my followers from like 
South Africa and different countries. You guys never get to see me live. So that's a blessing. So what we're doing is we're prepping for an event this weekend. And I was sharing with you guys what goes into event planning after dark. So we have um, white roses and the theme for this weekend is white and gold and um, taupe. And um, so we're processing all of our roses tonight. We have close to a thousand roses, if not over. And we had to go two hours away to get these roses because everywhere around this part of the United States, all over really, had a shortage. So where I normally order my roses from, they made me aware Wednesday that they would get the hydrangeas in, but not the roses. So I had to pull some strings and one of my friends located these for me but they were two hours away and people were literally standing in line fighting over them, literally. And I had another great friend to um, go and stand in line for me until I could get there. And we were able to secure all the flowers that we needed for this weekend's event. So, so here are the roses here. I normally process these off site, but I had to bring these home. So this is a whole different setup here. This is our little makeshift um, DIY flower floral studio. And going ahead and processing your flowers ahead of time does a few things. Number one, it, um, Make sure that you prolong the shelf life of your flowers. Number two, it cuts down on your build time when you get to uh, your wedding site. It cuts down on your time to build because you're not having to do all these steps and then create. All you have to do is pull, cut, and style. And number three, it allows you to uh, identify any mishaps with your flowers in advance and it also allows you to call out any flowers that you know may not need to be in the bunch or any petals or any bruises or anything like that you can just cull them out i also like to like roll my flowers and stuff like that but i don't want them to open up yet because this wedding is not on a Saturday, it's on a Sunday. I never do Sunday events. This was an anomaly. Probably will never do it again. Um, and so, I don't want them to open up just yet, but if I did, I would um, flex my roses and open them up a little bit more. I'll do that probably Friday and, or Saturday morning. Right now, I just want to inspect them and make sure that they get a fresh cut, fresh water, fresh food, and get everything in place so that when I'm ready to use them, we can. Okay? That's what we're doing tonight. So welcome to all of you guys who are just joining. If you're just joining me, I asked a question earlier. If you are an event planner, y'all need to come on and take the class, Jasmine. You'll enjoy it. Look, this is what I mean by inspecting the flower. Y'all see that? It's broken, so I can't use it um, for this particular, you know, in the centerpiece. Well, I could, technically, if it was the day of the wedding. I could take this and kind of put it back together and wrap it with floral tape or wire or something like that if I needed it. But since I don't, what I'm gonna do is take these and put them all in a freezer bag. A freezer bag. And 
and I can put them in the fridge and they make great, um, you can use them for boutonnieres and you can also use them for, these are a little big for a boutonniere, but you can use them for a flower girl basket for petals. And you'll just break it, break the head off and pull that center out and you can just create petals for your flower girl. So I don't throw away anything. Now, if you were making wrist corsages or something like that, you could definitely use it for that. See, like that. And if I wanted to flex it, which I'm not, but I would just fold them down like this. And then tomorrow, as they start to open up, you can just do like the first layer and a half. And then tomorrow, as they start to open up, this garden rose would be gigantic. It'll open up so pretty. But unfortunately tonight, we're gonna have to break the head, drop it in here. And we're gonna have some pretty petals for the fall girl. So basically, that's all I wanted to do, you guys. I wanted to kind of just share with you what I do after dark in event planning. And these are just the hours that nobody really sees or anything like that. So, you know what? This is what I need your help with. This bride is an older bride and she has older children, adult children. And her daughters wanted to be her flower girls. So I didn't want to give her adult daughter daughters flower girl baskets. So what can they do for their mom that would be amazing? What could the adult flower girls do? Y'all give me some ideas. Those are all the petals that I've been able to collect. Give me some ideas in the comments on what can I do or what can I get her daughters to do that would be special? What can I get them to do with the cylinder vases? Because they're, they're in the wedding. Satchel bags on a wristlet. They said they wanted something special. I tried to give them like little rings. They didn't want those. Hey, she's a beauty. They didn't want the little rings. So I'm trying to figure out what can I do for adult flower girls that will still carry out the purpose. Because they're doing it for their mom. No, 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 not boxes. They're gonna come down the wedding just like, they're gonna come down the owl in the wedding, just like a normal flower girl would do. But I don't want to give them baskets. That's my, look at how gorgeous this one is. Hold on. Let me see. Okay, Kathleen, what did you see the adult flower girls do? I 
I thought about them um, doing single roses down the aisle, but I just did something very similar in my last wedding where I had a rose ceremony, and I don't really want to repeat that. I thought about it, though. They sure were. In Coming to America, they really were adult flower girls dropping the flowers. You know, I need to find, what did they have? Was it a bowl? Somebody needs to find that picture from Coming to America. They sure were. They had a bowl. And they came down the aisle. That's a good point, Kathleen. They sure were. They were big baskets. What kind of big baskets, y'all? Y'all help me out. That's a good, oh my God, y'all the bomb. Yeah. So you guys who are watching the replay, leave me some comments down below on what can these adult flower girls do? I need to find something. I love that. They had, I remember the baskets were almost flat. I do remember that. They were like round and open. I remember that. I sure do. I sure do. And then should we like play a special song for them as they're placing the roses down for their mom? Okay, put the rose petals in bling boxes or jewelry boxes. That's a good idea as well. See, y'all, we, we sparkling tonight. I'm just surprised all of you guys are up this late. I thought I was the only one burning the midnight oil. Oh, yeah, you're in Moscatel. That's the store... A lot of people ask me about that Moscatel store all the time, and I could not remember the name of it because I was there visiting my sister-in-law, and I did a shopping haul there one time. And Lord, people were in the comments like, what's the name of that store? And I'm like, I literally do not remember. Oh, the jewels would be good, but this wedding is at the Botanical Garden, so I don't know if they're going to allow them to sprinkle jewels outside because whatever they use has to be biodegradable oh i understand i need to get my closet together when this is all over that is on my list of things to do is to get my closet together i went to a store today it was a home decor store y'all the store was amazing it was right down the street from where i went to go pick up my flowers and the store was absolutely incredible No, I don't live in um, California. I live in Alabama. I was in California visiting my sister-in-law and she took me to that store. They did use gold, gold bowls. I'm gonna find my other phone and look up what they used in coming to America and see if we can find that because we're gonna find those and that's what we're gonna use. So glad y'all are staying up with me tonight. I needed some company. We woke up Mr. Turner. What would be awesome, Tanya? Okay, Rose Petal Priestess. Okay. Hold on, I'm going to go get my other phone in a minute. Oh, yeah, coming to America. Yes, it would. Let me 
woven. I, I think I remember the baskets being um, woven, shaped like bowls. I remember that. Oh man, that would be so amazing. And I could even use the woven baskets because this is a very natural wedding. The colors are actually black, or well, the guys are the only people wearing black, but they're like taupe, like the color of my nails, um, ivory and champagne and white. And all the guests are wearing white. So even finding a natural basket would not you know, clash with the overall theme of the wedding. Well, that is cool. Thank y'all. And I'm just so happy that I'm getting to connect with my other friends around the world by going live at midnight because I forget, you know, we're all on different, look at there. That rose head is completely missing. That we're all on different times. I've had several rose heads that have been missing. And that is so important, like that you do your count. And when you're ordering fresh flowers to order extra, because when you're doing your recipe for flowers, it's just like doing a recipe when you're cooking. And you don't want to be short on something because your recipe, the end product may not turn out the way that you envisioned it. So, hey, hey, hey. Oh, we're just chopping, splitting the ends at an angle. I had the best shears from the Dollar General. And hey, from New Zealand, hey girl. I had the best shears from the Dollar General. They were green, paid $8 for them. They were the bomb.com. You could cut a stack of flowers at one time. But I have somehow misplaced them and I am so super hurt. So cute, so, so, so. That could have been like almost halfway done now. Over halfway done, I'm halfway done now. But if I had had what I needed, I could have been done, done. Done, 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 done. But, oh well. Such is life. Here's another rose head. See that? Put it over here for our flower priestess. So what I'm doing is just cutting them in, putting them in fresh water. With fresh food. 
I'm just nipping off the rubber band. And now that went across the room. That's why I'm doing it low. And then I just split the plastic. Let me, let me do this. Can you guys see that? Just so you guys can get an idea of what I'm actually doing underneath the camera. But you know, this is small enough. This can be used for a boutonniere compared to the head on this. This is too big for a boutonniere. The tea roses are typically really good for a boutonniere and the garden roses um, are typically too big. That was another missing head. So let's see how many usable heads we had out of this dozen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So you got to count your shortages. So now I'm going to line them all up. And I'm just clipping them at an angle. If I had my good shears, I could do, I could have done this whole thing at one time. But these shears are from Hobby Lobby and they are terrible. They're more or less for one time use. They are not for multiple use in my opinion. Okay, so that's what we're doing. In case you're wondering, that is what we're doing tonight. Let me see what you guys gotta say here. I'm prepping for a wedding. Is the paper rattling for you? Is the paper rattling um, sending you up the wild Kathleen? It doesn't sound like a lot to me, but I know it's a lot. That is what we're doing. We're prepping for a wedding tonight. And the wedding colors are taupe, gold, white, and ivory. Missing head. When you um, are pe prepping flowers, try to keep everything as neat and as clean as possible because it can get extremely, extremely uh, messy. I think it will be. And I'm going to be introducing mm, one, two, if all goes as planned, I should be introducing three different design, new design elements that you guys have not seen um, me do in this wedding. So that's why I'm being extra, extra, extra about getting all these things done. There's the missing head.
what do you guys do with the heads of your roses when um, they break off? For me, I look to see if they can be used in a boutonniere or a corsage for the ladies. If not, then um, or, or you, yeah, then I use them for the flower girl baskets. So what do you guys do with your broken rose heads? Or flower heads? Let me know in the comments what you do with your broken flower heads. This is the last three dozen from this batch. And we still got four more books. 12, 18. Hopefully we'll be done by two. What? No, it's 12.48. Oh, Jesus. We need the time and see how long it's taken to do one. Another broken head. I preserve my flowers. What do you mean? Like, I use um, Crowning Glory. It helps to pre preserve it when you spray them. But the preservation of your flowers um, all depends on your quality, um, processing them immediately. Look at that. Another broken head. Processing them immediately after you receive them. Minimizing their heat damage. Look at that. Another broken head. Ooh. Minimizing their heat damage. And um, making sure they have fresh water and keeping the leaves and things, things like that out of the water so that you don't have to deal with um, bacteria. That's how your water starts to get like moldy and stinky because nine times out of 10, you didn't change it and it started to get bacteria. Also, you gotta give them that fresh cut so that they can drink. See how many usable flowers we have in here. Two, four, six, eight, nine. That is nine out of 12, y'all. That's why you have to get over it when you're dealing with flowers because things happen. Is Mother Nature. It's not like they run down a production line and everything is gonna be perfect, perfectly cut like a McNugget. Mm -mm. Doesn't work like that. I think we got this bucket full, full enough. And then also you wanna make sure that everything is touching the water. All right, we're gonna go put this bucket up. Kizzy said, I finally caught a live. Um, I use the pedal. Someone said they wrap wire. I do that too, to make small arrangements, especially if I'm running low on flowers. You can also wrap the initial stem back around it as well. Okay, so we're gonna go put this bucket down and grab another bucket. Oh, thank you so much, Tracy. Girl, those shears from the Dollar General are everything. I gotta find mine. I have got to find my shears. Okay. So these are done. These we have to do inside.
So we're going to start by putting some food in there, some fresh water. Well, they're normally not in my house. We normally do them, process them in our little processing area, a little makeshift floral shop. But I got these late, so I'm having to process them at home. So now we got the food in them. We're gonna give them a little bit of a stir. You can just use a floral stem or anything that you may have to stir it up really good. And then we're gonna proceed to clean them up. So we're gonna time it this time. Yes, I have an online, I have a full online academy, Kizzy. It's uh, luxacademy.podia, P-O-D-I-A, P as in Peter, O as in Oscar, D as in dog, I as in igloo, A as in apple. So luxacademy.podia.com. Somebody type it down in the comments for me. I think Jaslyn is still on here. If you're still on here, Jaslyn, type the website so that they can find it. We just finished up one of our classes and they did an incredible job. I cannot wait to show you some of their work. I cannot wait to show you some of their work. Incredible. Jazz, will you type in the website for Lux Academy? Someone was asking about it. It's the bomb. And I don't, Jazz Lean is in here. She just, she just graduated. The class is eight weeks long, but it's nothing to play with, y'all. Like it's a, it's like going to school. They will, they will attest to the fact that I do not play. You're not getting no certification just because you paid. You're gonna have to do the work, and you're gonna have to do the work to the standards that are outlined in the curriculum. And if you don't. Your certification will await you till you get there. See that one's starting to open up. See that one is a little bit. Let me sh let me cut this one. I'll show y'all. I'm gonna get a new trash bag. I think this one has had its debut. You see right here, that one's bruised. So I just go through and make sure it's not rotting all the way through and it's just a bruise and it was. So. Excited too. You guys have touched my life in more ways than you will probably ever know until we all get to heaven. Yes, I do cut the stem that I need. Bag 
number one. I have all my trash bags here so that I don't have to do like a massive cleanup when I'm done. Even when I'm cooking in the kitchen, I like to clean as I go. It just makes it easier. When I finish cooking, all I like to have left is the dishes we are eating out of and maybe the pots or pans that couldn't be cleaned immediately. Hey! Thank you so much, Tasha on the go. Come on to class, kids. You'll love it. Who else other than Jasleen took Lux Academy this year? Hey, c -Nose, How are you? I get to see so many of y'all. I may need to do a pop-up live midnight live i did i may need to do another pop-up midnight live again because i'm getting to see so many of you guys that i'm used to seeing and so many of you guys that i haven't seen in a while hi nilsa oh nilsa also she's enrolled in the class as well so, Nilsa, tell them in the comments about your uh, experience in the class. And please be frank and honest, you know. Oh, they may not be able to put the website in there unless they're moderators. Okay. Let me see. Let me see if I can um, add them as a moderator. Let's see. No, I'm not saving the leaves. I'm throwing the leaves in the garbage. The only leaves I typically save is um, hydrangea leaves. Okay, Jazz, I just added you as a moderator. Hey, c -Nose. Nilsa, I'm adding you as a moderator as well. So one of you guys put the link to Lux Academy in the group. Thank you guys for telling me. Y'all know I am not super technical savvy. I love you guys too. Hey, from the ATL. I love hydrangeas. The only thing I don't like about hydrangeas is that they drink so much water. So as gorgeous as they are, they are not a, a good outdoor flower. They are not a good outdoor flower at all. As, and I love them because you can do so much with them. Um, and they, the, they're a mass flower, so you don't have to... They definitely cut your recipe down in terms of designing. You need that big flower in the, in the cut. So you guys remember I showed you a close-up of what I was doing um, earlier. I'm just cutting the, the flowers at an angle. You can see the difference with this. See this one? That's not a fresh cut. That's a fresh cut. Can y'all see that? And give them that fresh chop to help prolong the shelf life. I don't chop off too much because I don't know what size I need them to be. 
until I start designing. Now, y'all, look at these babies. These are the garden roses. Oh, my gosh. Look at that. Oh, these are gorgeous. These are so freaking gorgeous. These are like more of a... Yeah, I knew these were from, from Colombia. I could look at them and tell. Yes, I have a wedding this weekend. Let me show you guys the difference between these garden roses and these little Rudy Pooh roses. Look. Y'all see the difference? And this is why these are so expensive. Now, these roses... Was, well, you can save up your coins, honey. I also have a payment plan. Ooh, ooh, ooh. This one didn't even do it. It's not ready yet. No, the website is not Lux Academy. It's www. It's uh, luxacademy.podia, P-O-D-A, P as in Peter, O as in Oscar, D as in dog, A as in apple, dot com. Look, ooh. When this opens up, y'all, it's going to be gorgeous. These bad babies, I'm going to have to cut one by one. Oh, Lord, one of the heads broke. Look, it broke. New York is in the house. Hey, Amy, what you doing up this late, girl? You know it's late in New York. And the ATL. Good night, beloved KB. Rest well. Jazz, did Jazz put the link in there for y'all? Gotta take our time. These big babies right here. No, it's not a small wedding. And yes, processing flowers takes a while. Normally my team, well, this is just the roses. Now we have hydrangeas, we have orchids, we have other roses, we have a lot. And um, um, normally it's like a bunch of us doing this at one time and we can get it knocked out pretty quickly, but I had special circumstances around these. Thank you so much, Jasmine. I had so many special circumstances around these particular babies. These are like in high demand right now. And so, um, because they are in high demand, um, We are very fortunate and blessed that we were able to get some because there's a shortage of white flowers, particularly roses, all around the world. And honey, we had to pull some strings to get these. My friend Sharonda called around and found a place for me. And the place told us what we had to do. We had to be the first ones in line. They wouldn't hold them. Kind of like a first come, first serve. So I had to call in a favor from one of my clients because this city was like two hours away. Uh, the hydrangeas are white as well. And so my client went and stood in line for me, purchased the flowers for me. <laughs> she said, how do you strip them with your hand and not cut yourself? Years and ex years and years and years of experience. And I actually um, break more roses using the rose stripper than I do than I do with using my hands. Hi, Viola. So if you're just joining us, we are doing event planning after dark. And maybe I'll do some of these series at, you know, after each event and just kind of go live. Maybe I'll pre-record some, who knows. Um, and just kind of share with you guys the process that I endure doing, um, 
do doing uh, event planning. Like the real life behind the scenes stuff that y'all never get to see. So Jasmine gave you guys a little bit of background. Those who are interested in enrolling in my online school, it is now certified. So once you finish the eight, eight weeks course, it comes with testing. You have to do a um, final. The final includes a backdrop and a full tablescape. Um, what am I missing, Nilsa and Jasmine? You have a business plan. You learn how to price. I give you pricing packages, a pricing tool that will rock your world. You get all of my contracts and con you know contacts, vendors. I teach you how to make several different backdrops and large and small floral centerpieces. from start to finish. I assume that everybody is on ground one. And then once you, we get into the design portion, you can kind of share your level of expertise. Yep, and it is um, self-facilitated. You can take, it takes about eight weeks if you go through it properly. And that's that. Columbia grows some of the most beautiful roses, especially the garden roses. Oh my gosh. I love their roses. I love all of the roses out of the South American country. Um, yes. For the online portion, yes, everything is online. And then I have a, a live option. So some people take the online class for the basics um all the basics from business to contracts to you know how to make a centerpiece to how to build a backdrop they do all that online and then some people want to come and do yes i love what i do some people want to come and do like the hands-on portion to get like more advanced training or one-on-one -on -one training with me and if you take the online class I give you 50% off the in-person class with me. So the online class, if you pay for it up front, it's um, $7.97. And then the in-person class is half of that. So it ends up being like $3.97 if you take the online class. And if you do the financing option, it's $9.97 to finance it. So it's five payments of $1.99 but you walk away with everything you need. You will be perfectly fine after taking the online class if you didn't want to come to the in-person one. But you do everything. We did backdrops, we did floral centerpieces live. I had live classes and pre-recorded classes. Um, we did a backdrop live. And for your final, you have to cre recreate all of those things and submit them. No, the in-person class is just three days. It focuses more on just the decor portion. I do give you some of the other tools, but it focuses mostly on the decor. And it's, I've been developing this class for 
at least three, four years. So it's not like I just jumped up and said, I'm going to do a class. No, it is very, very, very detailed. And for those who have taken the class, um, they can attest to that. It's extremely detailed. You have homework and quizzes for every module. And there are 10 modules in the class. So some of it may be a multiple choice test. I think the first seven modules are all multiple choice tests and some homework. And then module eight and nine are hands-on where you produce all these things and submit them for your final grade. Please give new people your professional background. What do you mean, um, like in event planning or in general, C knows? So professionally, I guess I can start. I was a national product manager with a Fortune 500 food company. And I love to do event planning and design and decor um, as a side hustle. And then in 2017, my husband and I opened our first intimate event center. And it was during that time that I started to think about, you know, how to educate others in the industry. Um, I started to educate others in the industry because you guys have watched me here on YouTube build my business from scratch. Way back from my first video when I made my first backdrop. Because when I started back in 2005, maybe, the things that are available today in terms of the backdrops and all that, mm -mm, that was not available back then. So we had to be creative. So my first video on YouTube was me creating a backdrop using um, centerpieces, I mean, excuse me, using uh, foam board from the Dollar Tree. That was my first, my first video. And so you guys have literally seen me from the first video until now. And how that that is how God blessed me. Keisha said that's how I found you. Oh wow, see there? And now, you know, the strategies that I share with you guys in the class are the strategies that you watch me take. Like, it's not that I'm one of these people that just came up overnight by watching others and you know became marketing savvy. Mm -mm. Like, I have had to get it out of the gutter. I spent lots of time researching and, hey, Allie, thank you. I spent a lot of time researching and finding the best tools, the best strategies, everything. And all those things I compiled in class. Because you guys see it's proven. Not only have I done it here on YouTube, but I've also managed to do it, you know, with my business as well. That's been extremely prosperous to the point that we can accept or reject, you know, whatever customers may come our way. Just the other day I was going through inquiries and we had over 50 inquiries for wedding, 50. And I was only able to take 14 out of the 50 because of my schedule. So, if you follow, they are gorgeous flowers. Hey, Brenda. Brenda in the has been in the class as well. So, Brenda, they were asking questions about the class. And while I get my next batch of flowers, I want you to talk to them in the comments about your experience in the class, Brenda. Brenda was is a newbie into... 
um, the planning side. She never really intended to be a planner per se. She was doing it for one of her children's wedding. So you guys talk to each other in the comments and ask the questions because Brenda's also a nurse. She's an RN and she was able to complete it as well. Graduated this past Sunday and did an extremely well job. I mean, extremely good job. She did extremely well. <laughs> It's late. I'm talking all with the curriculum. I'm going to go ahead and get the rest of it. Okay. So what advice do you have for family and friends that always want a handout and a discount? Ha <laughs> ha. We talked about this in Lux Academy. So I'm going to let one of my Lux Academy students tell you what what my take is on family discounts and handouts and so on and so forth. Oh my gosh, I'm just so, I did not think that any of you guys would be up or that any of you would be interested in being up with me this late processing. But I guess it shows that you two have a love for it because you definitely have to have a love for this in order to excel in it. Oh, you're loving the Amazon lives? Yes, I can't wait until we do our balloon garland together. I still got to get y'all that list of stuff to order. I'm gonna try to work on that. I got it over there on my Table. I was working on that today until I got this phone call and I had to make things happen. Yeah, I don't talk about my classes a lot. I probably need to market them more, but I guess I kind of feel like the people that are meant to take them will find them. But I, you know, because I like the intimate, we had a lot of people in this last class, but I do like the intimacy and being able to spend that one-on-one -on -one time with everybody. So I don't want them like gigantic. I don't want to get to the point where it's not manageable. <clears throat> okay, some of you guys had some comments. Let me see. Let's see here. You're right, business is business. One twenty one in Chicago. So we've been working on flowers for an hour and we're almost halfway done. A little bit more than halfway done. 
No, the balloon garland has nothing to do with the class. That's something I'm doing on Amazon Live. In the class, you have to do flower centerpieces and a backdrop and a table, a full table, design, floor layout, all kind of stuff, but not balloon. That's not my specialty. This is just something I'm doing that's covering the basics or the fundamentals because I am not the balloon expert at all. For you guys that are just joining, in my next batch of flowers, I'll show you what I'm doing. I showed them earlier. This is my process of just um, prepping flowers. Look at that broken head. This is my process for prepping flowers for weddings and events. Now I'm doing the roses. Um, my team and I are scheduled to start working at noon on Saturday. The wedding does isn't until Sunday at 5 p.m. So we're gonna do all the florals on Saturday and they'll prep the rest of the flowers then. But I had to go get these today because there was a shortage or there is a shortage of white flowers this week. And the flowers that I'd ordered months ago, a month ago, um, did not arrive due to that shortage. So. I had to scramble at the last minute and a great friend and by the grace of God, we were able to get these done. So how many centerpieces? We are going to be doing um, eight large, um, eight small, a head table, we have four head tables and a sweetheart table and the ceremony and the bridal party flowers and the specialty flowers. Hold on, let me go get my charger. Honey, these shears are, are terrible. They are horrible. My good shears, I don't know where they are. I, my good shears are green. I got them from the Dollar Tree. They were only $20. The best shears I've ever, I mean, not $8 from the Dollar General. Excuse me. $8 from the Dollar General. Best shears I ever had. I have like maybe four or five pairs of them. Misplaced them. Don't know where they are. I used them for my last event. And we just didn't put them back where we normally put them. And I cannot tell you where they are. And I am struggling. It's rough. I would have been done with these. Been, been done. If I had my real shears. Because I could have cut a whole bunch at one time. Or maybe half. At least half. I would have only had to cut one time. I told y'all I was gonna let y'all see what I'm doing. Okay. Hold on. Let me show you. So these are the roses. And we're just pulling off the leaves so that they don't get down in the water 
and contaminate the water and cause mold and all that other stuff. Now, the only flower that I don't pull all the leaves off is like, most of the time, hydrangea. I leave a few leaves on, on the hydrangea. But with roses, they are not pretty leaves. So, unless I'm doing something very gardeny, I typically take them off. That's a cute little head for it. And that's that. And then I go through and cut them. Kind of even them all up. And then if you got good shears, you can just chop one time. But these suck. They are. I probably only use them once, honestly. They look bad, but they aren't bad. And then you can tell like your fresh cut from your cut that is not fresh. That one's not a fresh cut. And that one's not a fresh cut. Put them in the water. And that's that. Let me repeat. This is my first time since I've been in the industry that I remember floor shortages that have been prolonged this much. Now, sometimes when it happens, it's typically due to weather, but they tend to recoup, you know, pretty quickly. But, honey, this year it's been something else. on how long you take care of them. I've had them to last for like a week and a half to two weeks before. As long as you keep the water fresh, keep the bacteria out, keep them hydrated, you're good. reasons this week there was a shortage on white flowers because last it was new york fashion week and um a lot of the white roses went to italy to the celebrities and you know they pay top dollar i don't use aspirin i'm using plant food tonight sometimes i'll use um sometimes i'll use um um what's the name of that it's not, not alum. Maybe it is alum. It's a seasoning. Sometimes I'll use that in there. Just depends. And sometimes they say you can put a penny in it, and that'll help too. Copper. I've never tried it, but I know people that have. These haven't opened up, which is good because this is kind of how I wanted them because my wedding isn't until later, but we got some, we got like a very difficult, the most difficult install. Not difficult in terms of hard, but difficult in terms of technicality. It's the most difficult install that we've ever done. And we're going to do four, not one, not two, but not three, but four of them this weekend. And I can't wait to share it with you guys. Let me show y'all. I got a bunch of boxes. I heard that about the pennies. I sure did. Let me run 
and um, I'm going to run it my cell phone charger. We've been doing this for 85 minutes. And I, I actually had only done like a half a bucket when we got on here. So we, by the time we finish, we will have processed 800, I think it's 866 roses or 900 roses in this time together. Minus me taking breaks and doing all of that. I'm in great company. Good. I need it. Lord knows I need it. So, we're going to chop these. Y'all stay here and keep each other company for just a minute. Because I got to go get my charger. This one is not working. And I don't want the camera to die. So, I do want to save this live. Last night when I went live, my camera died. And when I tried to come back in, it wouldn't let me come in. And I tried to go live again. And it wouldn't let me go live again. And it just had the people hanging in there. Would not let them out. Would not let me end the live. And then finally, it just cut off. I didn't get a chance to save it. I didn't get a chance to do anything with it. So I don't want it to go dead again tonight. Because this, people will probably want to see this one. So give me just a minute. I'm going to let y'all look at the flowers. And you guys can... Um, keep each other company until I get back. Okay, you guys. That wasn't too bad, was it? You're trying to get patient till you get the remainder to pay what, Jennifer? Hey, Jennifer. Oh, the class, yeah. I completely understand. Again, there is a payment plan available if you want to do that option. You don't have to, 
it's definitely cheaper to pay it all up front, but I just have, you know, there's a risk that I have to assume financially um, when you guys do, you know, when people do the payment plan. I have to pay for it up front. So, y'all know payment plans are always like, I did have people to enroll and then just stop paying for whatever reason. Maybe life, maybe, you know, I mean, things happen. And so that's why it's a little bit more because of that risk. No, they don't have to be paid in full before starting the class. You can pay them. You can, you have to, I think you have, it's $1.99 a month for five months. And you can pay the $1.99 and get started up front. Viola. Y'all, I'm getting a little delirious. I'm sleepy. My niece and nephews were my niece and nephews here from California this summer. And I got a little bit behind on YouTube videos. I have so many videos I need to post. Um, because they were here and I really wanted to, you know, enjoy that time with them. Plus I had launched Lux Academy. And so I just had to let something go. And then I was jam packed with events. So I knew you guys would be here when I got back and know that I was going to bring some amazing content when I did come back. And so they went home last week and they called me yesterday. Um, well, their parents called me and just thanked us for everything this summer. Um, we miss them so much. Oh, we miss them so much. We just got these two left. Yeah, Fino's has been here for a minute, so never hardly ever misses a live or anything like that. So you can pretty much trust what she's saying. Let me see. You have the option of paying half up front. I'm sure you could. I don't know. I've never tried that. It's not through me. It's through. Um, it is not through me. It is through Stripe. So that would be a question for Stripe. Because I didn't want to have to process anybody's credit card. What advice would you have? For people that don't know what they want, but they want something really nice. Um, I would try to get them to figure out what they like. You may not be able to get them to pin down a certain event, but what you can do, I mean, a certain look, but what you can do is decide what they like. You know, figure out if like, are you, do you like, um, rustic do you like bling you know just ask them a series of questions to see what they like and they don't like and then try to go from there because they have some kind of idea they may not know how to express their style but everybody has a style 
And the worst thing you can do is do an event and um, not get a good grasp on what their personal style may be. So you definitely want to um, explore their personal style as much as you possibly can. Because everybody got style. I mean, if nothing else, you can look at the way they dress or the way they decorate their home. Um, any of those things can kind of uh, point you in the direction of that individual style. I hope that answers your question. That was a good question. Yes, there is a payment plan for the live class as well. Mr. Turner's going to wake up in the morning. Lord have mercy. He'll start sweeping. there y'all 98 minutes Thank you. Love you too. Benita. prayer in the morning at five. <laughs> so I don't know if I'm going to try to tease myself and go to sleep for maybe an hour or so, wake up and do prayer and then take another nap. Um, I don't know, or just stay up and get everything done and then come home and go to sleep in the afternoon. Um, so we'll see. Broken heads are, I've almost, I know, wait a minute, let's see. This is why you over order. Let's see how many. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. And I know, you know, we made rose petals with the other one. So we're, I know for sure that we have at least a dozen and a half roses that we have lost. Good night, Queen Jazz. 
that we've lost a dozen and a half roses um, due to broken heads. So this is why you need to not order exactly what you need because if you can, get some overhead, over. We're gonna see how many of you guys gonna hang in with me till we finish up. Let's see. How many y'all up until I'm up? If you need to go, go to bed, go to sleep, go to work, you do what you gotta do. Thank you so much, Jazz, for your help tonight. She knows that I will be right here. I know that's right. Mm. Okay, thank y'all. I am getting so tired. Inspired said Dominique said I will make no promise. I understand. I need some. I'm not a coffee drinker. I am, I'm just a naturally high strong person like that is my natural energy it's just net i don't know i don't know what you call it is it high energy i don't know what you call that i'm just it's just that way is it high strong energetic <laughs> britney says she got one eye open Okay, Kathleen, you're doing the paint trimming. Okay, babe, we're going to be together then. <laughs> okay, Jennifer. This is going to be you Saturday night. Okay, Katoria. Good night, Jennifer. I'm prepping for a wedding, Natasha. One of the most elaborate designs that we have done thus far. Your Sunday bride just what? Told you what? She needs help for what? Hey, Sarah, we're working on a wedding for Sunday night. And I was just going behind the scenes to show everybody the um, event, event planning late night. Oh, awesome. Viola's, okay, we're prepping the flowers. So somebody said, you're doing it on a Thursday night? Yes, honey. When you have thousands of roses, you got to start on a Thursday with the prepping. Oh, with her altar pieces. Gotcha. <clears throat> I'm not going to flex the roses or anything like that to open them up, but I'm going to go ahead and prep them. Congratulations. Oh, you proud to say you need to help. I know that's right on a Thursday. Honey, she a good one. Mm -mm. The deck like this, you, you see what I'm doing right now? Like, I can't. And things like this, like, I had all this planned out in advance. My Nana used to say we were high strong. Listen, that's where I get it from, the old people. Oh, I don't mean that in a bad way either for all my season ladies watching this. I just have an old soul. <laughs> so, yeah, okay, a natural high. But I don't like the way um, natural high sound. I don't want anybody to get the wrong idea. You know what I mean?
Yes, all the above, see nose. Oh, you're um congratulations on getting married. Let me tell you, I had a girl that was also going to save that golden white wedding I just posted. She was gonna save for her dream wedding too. But what we did was we just did a super simple, elegant, intimate wedding. And it was all she could have ever dreamed of. You guys saw their reaction. So don't, you know, feel like you got to have this big, huge, gigantic budget. You just need to be creative. Oh, my gosh. It smells amazing. I love the way stock smells, too. Stock smells so good. I don't have any of that here in my house. But... Um, I wish I did. I didn't get any. I picked that up Saturday. Yes, I love eucalyptus. I love mint. No, I said stock. Like, if you have stocks and binds, but it's a, it's like a filler. I lost that one. Yeah, keep that in mind. So many options out there nowadays for budget friendly friendly weddings you making key lime pie okay what you making key lime pie for on a thursday night you getting ready for um labor day you taking some to work what you doing girl yes congratulations sarah We might have to start a GoFundMe for me some good shears. I went to every Dollar General in my area today, and none of them had those green shears. Those were some good shears, too. catch my sister my good sister up in the com in the um comments with the insomnia run catch her up on the classes and everything that's going on she was asking trying to get caught up they were talking about lux academy um my online class i have an online class and i have an in-person class so um, they were giving the website to the class because some people expressed an interest in taking my class. And basically, I the if you go to the website that's listed, it tells you everything that's included in the class. And um, let's see. And then they were asking about payment, and I was telling them the price and then that I also have payment plans available. And that was it. Not much. Nothing uh, earth shattering. And then some of the people were sharing their experiences with the in the, with the chat fam um, while I went and got the charger to charge up my phone because I needed to charge it on up. Oh, thank you so much, Debbie Deb J. Oh, your co-worker is in. Oh, that's so sweet. 
I bet you they good. Wish I had some of it. But I've been really working on my weight because I got out of order during COVID. Um, so my doctor told me I needed to lose 28 pounds. 28 pounds, y'all. <clears throat> for health reasons, not for vanity reasons. So to motivate me, um, I signed up to do a collaboration with a company, a fashion collaboration. So I've been trying to get myself back together. Ooh. Another one bites the dust. But during COVID, all I did was eat because my mother-in-law cooked every day. She would not let us go to the restaurant to eat. Um, so she cooked every single day. That's exactly how you start a business, Debbie Deb. Go get your homestead license. Take your serve safe test and keep it smoking. And your business license. So nobody tries to report you. I think you can do baking under the cottage. The um, I think it's homestead. Is it homestead or the cottage law? One of the other. One of them is for your house. And the other one is for your your bakery. It's either cottage law or home. Homestead is when you get your house. I think it's a cottage law where you can do baking in your home and get a license. Yeah. I can't. Girl, look. I'm delirious now. Yeah. That's what I thought. Homestead was from the, for the house. So I went to this furniture store today. Y'all, it's so high end, but it's so gorgeous. And so me, I have never seen like one store that wrapped up my total style aesthetics as far as the home. Cause y'all know I have been doing all neutral with pops of color. If you look at my furniture in the house, everything is neutral. Everything is neutral. The base of all my furniture has always been neutral, but I just add color. And so I went to this place today. Y'all, it was so bomb. And everything was neutral with pops of color. So refined. Oh my gosh, it was gorgeous. But the cost was ridiculous. I won't say ridiculous, but woo, it was up there. It was up there. All right, this is the, we got one more. We're gonna put this one in place. And we got one more. I believe that. Oh, now your baby trying to wake up. You best to go to bed. You better lay it on down if the baby trying to wake up. How old is the baby? Good 
tonight. Oh, seven months. Oh. I think I'm gonna put a couple more bunches, to, a couple more bunches in this bucket here. Cause it's not all the way full. I'm gonna put some more here. Cause it's not all the way full. Y'all see that? So we're gonna put a couple more bunches in that one. So that we can make sure all the stems are, are hitting the water. And that it's enough water in them to cover all the stems. And can of the dry zero sugar. It don't taste as good as the other one, but it's it's pretty good. I just have to have it cold, like super cold. My eyes are getting red. We're almost there. But this is really the event planning after dark. Like this is real life right here. This is what y'all don't get to see on the camera. Y'all don't get to see stuff fall apart, stuff not show up, stuff not doing what it's supposed to be doing or giving what it's supposed to be given. You just get to see the before and after. But no one really gets to see the in-between. And that's one thing I like about the Lux Academy Live, that the Lux Academy Online just will never be able to offer. And that is all the stuff that happens after hours, behind the scene, the mishaps, the changes, just the weather elements, logistical elements, so many different things that come into play. Yes, it's all the prep behind that. Let me try these. My other ones just in. Oh, these are good. See? Why did I do this before? See what? Some good shears will change your life. Look at that. We're done with that. We're going to rock and roll now. Um, why do I have a passion for what I do? I think it's just a God-given talent. I really do. I really do. I love to see the joy on my clients' faces. I love to make people happy. I receive it. I love making people happy. So I think that's the number one reason why I love event planning, because I love to make people happy. I love to make people smile. That's one of the reasons why I love to share on YouTube. I had a YouTube channel for a minute before I knew you could monetize your videos and make money, you know, which is not a lot, but I had no clue. I had one for years before I ever monetized it. So I didn't know. I was just creating videos because I wanted to share them with y'all. And then my good sister at home with Nikki was like, girl, why you ain't got no ads? on your videos. I was like, oh, you can do that? I had no clue. But what we are gonna do, we're gonna raise a GoFundMe so I can get me some shears. I want the $8 shears from the Dollar General. I want my shears. I'm so silly, y'all. You got me, Doris. <laughs> I want my shares, y'all. Because I tell you the truth. 
a sister be excited about the simplest things. video about being passionate from the sale point of view about you love coming from what you love coming from your career hmm. let me see hold on that was a long question y'all know it's two o'clock in the morning okay can you do a video about being passionate from the sale point view about what you love coming from your career perspective besides another beauty Kathleen, like break it down for me, cause I, my brain ain't working. Somebody, y'all help me. What she, what you trying to say? Cause my brain is not working right now. Can you do a video about from a sales point of view? Hi from London. How are you? I'm not sure how to pronounce your name, but I'm glad you're here. I don't want to mispronounce your name. Passion is beauty number one. Oh, it would be good to hear that from someone else. Oh, yeah, yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, so my passion is not just the beauty, it's the, it's the, um, the joy that it brings to others. That's the number one thing. And then I would say the creative process. I like to see things transform. I like to turn ugly things into beautiful things. Yes, passion is what typically drives entrepreneurs. But the passion has got to be present in spite of the um, in spite of the um, profit or lack thereof. I love colors as well. I love colors. And this, creating this um, particular wedding palette has been challenging for me because I do love colors. Absolutely the wow factor of our work. Yes, I love that. That really, really motivates me and inspires me to keep going because, you know, I'm like, oh my gosh, God, did my hands do that? I love that. I love glam, more so in my fashion than my designs. Not so much in my home. If it is, it's like a subtle, understated type of glam. Or maybe in a tablescape or something like that. And I think like through my years of being on YouTube, I've really started to mature and matriculate into the person that I am today. And I really love her. I love her.
And it's been just a blessing to be able to share this journey with you guys from start to finish, especially those who have been here from the beginning that remember, you know, the days when I was recording videos on my iPad and thought that you had to do everything in one take <laughs> instead of, um, you know, editing because I had no clue. I had no clue whatsoever. Family events is a great, they're a great way to start. I got my start at church. Although, when I was in college, I did do my brother's wedding and all of my friends' wedding. I had like this notebook full of weddings, all types of weddings. And when my friends got married, they everybody got married before me. And I gave them all my wedding ideas. I had a wedding plan for every season. And I should have known then that I was in the wrong, not wrong field because I was really successful in my job and I loved it and I loved the people, but I should have really tapped into the gift way back then. Probably one of my biggest regrets is not tapping into that gift sooner. I don't know where I would be right now had I. I love writing and I love creating. I, those were the two things I loved to do. When I was in college, I had the most decorated dorm room ever. Lamps and nice. I mean, I worked all summer to save up to buy comforters and wall art and everything I needed for my dorm room. Matching hangers. I've just always been that person. You are so, that's so right, Doris, you're right. You're, you are correct, so you know, the gifting definitely has to come with maturity and fullness. What is the biggest budget you have ever had to work with thus far? Um, $150,000. Oh, thank you so much. Ah, uh, Ayo, Ayo, is that how you say it? Ayo? Spell it phonetically for me. $150,000 was the biggest budget I've had to work for, work with thus far. And then for a single table, one table, the biggest budget I've ever had was, um, I think it was four or $5,000, one table. Now the $150,000 event that I did, yes, it was a star-studded event. I had to sign an NDA. The person found me here on YouTube. I flew private Thanksgiving weekend. How long does it take to decorate for an event? It depends. It depends. Um, on the complexity of your design, on the number of people on your staff. How far your you know what you have to do to unload for the event. 
Like if you have to go upstairs or something like that and go in an elevator, unloading can take longer. It's just a lot of factors. So it's hard to give you like a really direct answer. But on average, with all things being equal, it typically takes us about four to five hours. Maybe six. But I like to a lot at least five. And I have a team of five. Yes, my team has the same passion. And when I text them tonight and was, you know, telling them about the flowers, they were just like, wait, 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 we'll do it. I'm like, no, because they got so much other stuff to do tomorrow. And I'd rather just go ahead and have this done versus waiting. This is like, we one thing off my plate and I can rest. How was your business impacted by C19? Okay, so in the beginning, like everyone else, We were at a standstill. And so, thankfully, we had done some larger events, some larger budget events in the beginning of the year, like January. Um, and the last, the event that we had the weekend before everything got shut down was a, um, a nice size budget event as well. And so, we were able to manage throughout that process because we had properly, um, yes, I have had celebrity clients. The $150,000 budget was a celebrity client. Um, yes, we have managed to um, manage our, our funding, our funds well, so we were able to survive through that. I got a grant for like a thousand dollars. I got two grants for a thousand dollars and that was it. That was it. So I had to get really creative um, in what I was offering. And so I actually started doing interior decor because a lot of people have been asking me to do it for a minute. And I was like, no, 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 no. But doing, um, during that time, a lot of people were at home. And so they wanted, things done to their home. And so I just started doing a lot of designing, uh, interior design. And that really just took us all the way through the whole year and into this year. And we're still like finishing up projects. So that's how we managed through it. And the number one thing was just the grace of God, because I'm telling y'all, like we still had an extremely, extremely good year um, in spite of all of that. Because I will tell you at first, I was like, Lord, did I really hear you to quit my corporate job in the middle of this? I do. Y'all, I got so many projects that I haven't showed y'all yet. I have um, one house that's almost finished, a brand new house, two brand new houses that are just starting, three, three brand new houses that are just starting. We have furniture, but we don't have, and we have paint, but we don't have um, 
accessories yet. And so, prayerfully, I'll be able to carry you guys through that process with me. Those processes. But I've filmed them all. And the thing about these projects, like, when I go in, they just won't. They start out wanting one thing, and then I end up doing a whole house. So every one of these projects I'm telling y'all about, they are all, like, they're not just the living room, whatever. They, the whole, they are the whole house. And so that's why they've been taking so long. Oh, you are so welcome. I'm going to stop in a minute and go back and look at the comments, y'all. I'm just trying to get to the end of these right here. We got the last two. So I'm going to stop and look at the comments and answer those questions while we work through the last two. These are the last two bundles. Okay, let's see here. Oh, you're so welcome. Christy, what you doing up this late, baby? Okay, Brianna, um, how is your business impacted by C19? I was working as a designer manager for a large-scale event design company. Things practically went south. Okay, Brianna, did I answer your question, huh? So the same thing happened with us, but we just, basically, we were blessed to have, the beginning of that year, we were working on an event that was for the NBA All-Star. And the request came through in December of 2019. And... Um, I thought it was a joke. And then I called the individual. And um, when I called them, I figured out quickly it was not a joke. So my team and I, we flew, um, and my mentor, no, my fir first it was me, my mentor and I, we flew to Chicago and had a meeting and it was just gonna be the biggest event ever. It was, it was amazing. And I was like, you know, there are so many incredible, incredibly talented um, planners and designers in Chicago. Like, why would you guys reach out to me? But it was just the nature of the event that they were having. It was for like the wives and girlfriends um, and things like that of NBA players. And they wanted someone who was motivating and encouraging and all of that. Um, in order to to um, design. And so the lady who was over it said to me, you know, yeah, there are some incredibly talented designers here, but the one thing that made us want to stick with you is your heart. Like, I watched you on YouTube. I love your heart, and I really think the energy that you bring would be a breath of fresh air to these women. And I was like, oh, so that's how it happened. Of course, unfortunately, we know what happened next. Kobe Bryant passed away and they ended up having to do like a memorial service for him instead of what they were originally gonna do for these ladies. in that same hour. And I think Vanessa was also gonna be a keynote speaker for that whole segment. And so that's what happened. But there were contracts and things like that in place and, you know, so. Uh, although that was unfortunate, it wasn't a total loss. And then we did another event that was a nice, it was a corporate level event as well. So we were we secured two events 
the first three months of the year that would, would have forever shaped the whole identity of mailing turn designs and events. So that's what happened. So when COVID hit, you know, because we started out the year so strong, we were in a good position. But if you don't plan well, of course, nobody can sustain, or a lot of companies couldn't sustain, you know, not making a profit month after month, day after day, week after week. So that's why it's always important to have a diversified skill set. So while the world was shut down, people started reaching out to me like, we do our house now. Everybody was home. So everybody was into home decor. My YouTube videos around home decor picked up. Sponsorships around home decor picked up. Everything with home decor just started, you know, really taking off. And then that whole trend of drive through baby showers and drive through events and, you know, micro events started to take off. And that was my specialty anyway. That's what I did in the beginning. And so we were able to kind of navigate throughout that time. I got two loans, not two loans, two grants, because I didn't want a loan. I had to pay back anything. We got two grants and um, they were both $4,000 each. And um, that was that. So by the time all of that was over, you know, we were able to successfully navigate um, throughout the remainder of the year. And um, here we are. And so our 2021 started off, it was just insane. Like the amount of requests and everything like that that we had was just, uh, you know, it was insane. So we spent the majority of the year doing homes. We kicked off 2021 doing homes. I found talents that I had that I wasn't even aware that I had it. I had. And so um, that is how it happened. That is the honest to goodness truth, how everything went down. And um, we were fortunate not to have to shut our doors. We were fortunate that, um, you know, we had other things to do. And a lot of my workers was, you know, they were able to easily, like the, the crazy thing is, you know, they were already involved in things that, you know, um, that um, pertain to the home. And so they were able to easily just kind of transition over to interior decor. So that was, that's our story. That's how we managed to survive through that terrible, terrible, terrible time. The crazy thing was that nobody was able to get unemployment. I can't tell you how much money I spent on unemployment over the years, how many, how many, how much money in taxes I, you know, had paid, but nobody was able to get it. It was just the craziest thing. And so finally I told him, I was like, you know, this may not be the option that God wants us to take. So we just gonna figure this thing out. And he took care of us. What happened with Cino? That's why I want to put her name in the pot. I'm not that good. Yep. All right, guys. So you remember where we started? It's been 146 minutes. So somebody calculate that for me. 146 divided by 
60 to see how long this has taken us. You're right, see, now those people did get the opportunity to. My brother's getting ready to move into a mini mansion. Oh, wow, Doris. Put... Yes, definitely. Let me send you some new pictures of stuff that I just completed. Bailey, um, Brianna, I do mentor. I'm glad I was able to answer your question. Thank you so much, Christy. Two hours and 26 minutes. So it took us, took me by myself two hours and 26 minutes to process. Christy, how many flower roses was this? 866 roses. Christy picked them up for me. Okay. Two hours and 26 minutes. Yep. So now we're going to do a quick cleanup. I'm going to hop in the shower and probably sleep in the chair for a minute so that I won't miss morning prayer. And after morning prayer, I'll probably go ahead and knock out my must-do list for tomorrow. Here's all of my extra flour food. I'll go ahead and knock out my must-do list for tomorrow. And um, once I do that, I'll come back home and take a nap so that I'll be ready to go for Saturday. I'm going to clean up my floral tools and sweep. And then we'll get ready for part two tomorrow. So thank you guys. I hope you enjoyed this. I love you. My husband's looking at me sideways and don't know why I'm in the bathroom watching. That's too funny. Don't you get in trouble, honey. Like, who is that on the phone? Miss Melanie. But um, after this, we'll be ready for part two tomorrow. So that's when I tackle all these little miscellaneous things on the list. I also have a pack, a major pack list. My team. We'll be working on packing one of the trucks that contains the decor. And then we have another truck that just has flowers. So the flowers and the decor travel on different trucks. Um, and so they'll be working on that and getting that packed for tomorrow. I have a hammer. You know, one day I'm going to go through my bag of everything that's in my event planning bag. Because, honey, I got all kinds of stuff in there. Got a sweep. 
then we are good to go you're so welcome thank you guys so much for chatting with me y'all made it go by quickly two hours and 26 minutes i don't think that's bad for the number of roses that we did together i will leave this live up um for anyone that wants to go back and watch it and kind of understand what it takes um this is just a small part of the job and these are the things that you need to consider when you start quoting um, individuals for different jobs that they expect you to do. This is why it's important not to underprice yourself. Like no matter what your skill set, your skill level is, your time is priceless. It is really priceless. So don't feel bad about the prices that you charge because you're worth it. Nobody thinks about the late nights, the early mornings, the lack of sleep. No matter how much you plan and how much in advance you plan, things can still go wrong and things still do go wrong. So the thing to remember there is that, you know, you are valuable and your time is valuable. And so you want to make sure that you're getting um, the best. You, you, you want to make sure that you are getting the best rate for your time as well as for your experience so and your creativity. So what do you want to watch tomorrow, Viola? What I do tomorrow, honey, I don't know. We'll see. Um, when I'm running around doing the errands and stuff like that. Okay, we'll see. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go finish cleaning up really quickly. I'm going to hop in the shower. I'm going to probably get a 30 minute nap and do the prayer line. And then I will probably take about a two hour nap and then I'll get up and start on my list. Because what I've found is that I'm more effective early and getting a lot of things done. So um, that's, that's it. I think that's it, y'all. Pray God's goodness and mercy and grace over each and every one of you. May the love of God that surpasses all understanding and the peace of God that surpasses all understanding be your portion in the name of Jesus. I love you guys. God bless you. You guys, I just love you. So I'll see you later. Um. I hope you guys enjoyed this format. So I'm going to leave it up for you guys for a little bit. And um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed seeing the real life portion of what it means to be an event planner. Thank you so much, Brianna. You have a blessed day. Thank you so much for all you did, Christy. Love you. I love each of you. Good night, you guys. Bye.